today in the studio, folks. I got one of my freaking most favorite individuals on planet Earth, Tim Lane in the house. What's cracking? Yeah, what's happening, I call him Brad? Tim Bring the Pain Lane. What was your nickname? Bring the Pain. Oh, it was? Bring oh, it pain, could have been yep. Bring the Pain or Insane, like <laughs> Tim Insane Lane. Folks, this dude, four-time world kickboxing champion, retired from professional fighting and then went basically with a record of 15-1, by the way. Yes. Who knocked you out? Man, it wasn't a knockout. It was actually a, a, I lost a decision against a dude from Philadelphia named Frankie Nieves. And it was. You'll never both, forget him, will you? I'll never forget his ass. But you only <laughs> lost one out of 15. And then since you retired, you started training a bunch of fighters with no experience, and they ended up becoming champions, Golden Glove champions. Then you ended up training your former sparring partner, Chris Algeri, who had no previous experience to win 20 professional fights in a row. Opening door, opening the door to a dream match for the title against Manny Pacquiao. Like, dude, that's major shit, dude. That that shows, hey, this dude must know what he's doing, huh? Mm, yes, I was I was dedicated to it. And then 2010, Tim moved to Las Vegas, where he became an in-demand coach at Extreme Couture MMA. Then he founded Tim Lane Fitness. Now, coached athletes, celebrities. You know, I, I would imagine you've been, you know, questioned about consulting on authenticity in movies. Demi Lovato, Nick Carter. But what, what's really cool is the stick boxing you developed. I want to talk about that. Um, but more importantly, like the swimming trophy. Like, see, folks, the reason old Tim Lane's one of my favorite dudes ever is he, he was listening to the podcast and he heard me say, six years old, I went in a swim meet and basically lost. I got disqualified because I swam too fast. Now, most people are like, come on, dude. And I'm like, that's a real story, dude. I beat their asses so handily. I don't know how. I was young. I don't remember. I, I, I mean, I do remember the swim meet. I don't remember why I was so good, but they put me in swimming. Bam! The, the league I'm supposed to be in, and pop, first meet, whoosh, waste people so bad that they disqualify me. They say I went way too fast. That I, wouldn't, I shouldn't have been in that league. And that was that. And old Tim heard that, so all of a sudden out of, in the mail, I get this freaking first place trophy. Brad Lee, first place, guppy swim team. What made you think of doing that? Mm, well, Brad, that, that trophy is long overdue, brother. And hee <laughs> hee. You ain't kidding. Mm, yes, my friend actually just left here, Jerome Sapp. He's a former NFL player and he's a he's a coach of a of a youth baseball team that I help him coach with. It's called Team MVP. And recently we were at a tournament and the umpire made a bad call. He he called his son out. His name is his son's name is Ace. Ace hit a home run. And on his way home, right before he touched the base, he took off his helmet and he patted one of his you know, teammates because they were excited. And the referee, this is at the beginning of the game, referee goes, you know, you're out. And the whole team was like, what? You know, we, we don't understand what's going on. But the team kept their mental together. They ended up winning 26 to 2. The other team took the hat off. After we were leaving, the umpire came up to Jerome and Aiden on our way to the car. And he said, guys, look, I made a mistake. Can you please forgive me? I, I, I made the wrong call. I thought I was making the right call. His son played on the other team. He was trying to be legit. But the fact that he came up and said, can you guys forgive me? Uh, it, it made me think about you because I had seen that video on you. And I said, man, it keeps coming up. You got to get Brad a trophy. You said, <laughs> hey, Brad, you know what you said? You said it was the first event and the last event my father ever showed up to. That's right. It hit my heart, and the reason that you won like that, you know why he was so fast, Jay? Because my so, dad was there. So excited your dad was there. <laughs> <laughs> that you touched my make, heart, brother. Hey, you're going to make old Jay Duran cry. <laughs> His girl outside's probably already crying right now. Yeah. Gee. Oh, yeah. Well, that could be, that could be dude. It's, it's like, man, when, when you start getting into that psyche, you know, those type of situations in life, whether someone strikes out or hits a home run or whether, whether their dad – Freaking loves them or doesn't love them or supports them or doesn't support them. All those little things and, you know, develop or at least are included in somebody's development where mm. it could affect a bunch of things. Man, now, personally, when I got this, I'm like, dude, that is cool as shit. And by the way, like, you know, I rarely think about it other than when I'm telling a story, you know, but when you say maybe I did swim so fast because he was there. That's mm. a good one. I had a judo <laughs> tournament, Brad. That's a tearjerker, Tim. And the way you <laughs> I mean, say it, too, 
You know what I'm saying? Dude, Tim Lane, this is one of my favorite dudes in the world. If you guys ain't following this dude, go to at Tim Lane Fitness on social media and hit him up, follow him, tell him you're from the bomb squad, ask him whatever questions. I don't think you train anymore, though, do you? I don't train fighters anymore, but right now I, I work with a group called Merging Vets and Players. That's a nonprofit organization that helps empower, inspire, and motivate combat veterans and professional athletes to have a team when a uniform comes off. It's a nonprofit? It's a nonprofit. Yeah, we got six chapters now around the country. Why, why don't you here. make some profit? <laughs> it's about that time now, Brad. You know, <laughs> it's about time to make some profit. But I had to get my heart in the right place first, Brad. Yeah. It took a while. What, why? Why did it take a while? I had a lot of demons, brother. Did you get them out? I got them out. How, how'd you get them out? Man, this dude from Merging Vets and Players named Isaac Saldivar, he kept asking me to go on a camping trip. You ever had a dude ask you to go on a camping trip? <laughs> hey, man, no. me either. I said, nah, man, I, you know, <laughs> nah, thanks, dude. But the man <laughs> asked me to go camping. He asked me again. I said, man, nah, man, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Third time he asked me now. This is a Purple Heart recipient. You know, he's, he's, he, he's done some, some crazy stuff for our country, right? I said, you know what, Isaac? Okay, man, I'm going to go camping. We go camping and, and, and we're, we're, we're having a, you know, we got a little fire, having a little fireside chat. First night we're there. You know, we got two tents. You know, I was hoping he didn't say, hey, I got this one tent. You know what I mean? So I got, I got my own tent, right? <laughs> so Isaac starts saying some stuff about, you know, about, about war, right? So I'm thinking to myself, you know, he, he's going to tell me a war story. I don't really like to hear about hurting people. But the way he told me, Brad, he started saying some things about some violent things he had to do over there. And he wasn't telling me to brag or seem like he was, you know, boasting. He was telling me some stuff because he was ashamed. And he said, Tim, I did these things. And when I go to sleep, I, I see these sights in my eyes. And right in front of me, Brad, I saw something lift off him. And I got this feeling on my skin of goosebumps. And I said, Isaac. You know that scar on my stomach, man? That didn't come from nobody else. That came from me sticking a knife into my stomach because I didn't want to live anymore. And when I said that to him, something lifted off my body. And I was able to feel like I shared something that was so deep that made me feel so shameful. But the next day, man, I felt like I was a, almost a new guy. So I was like, oh my God. Wait, if I share this story about this, I shared a thousand things that I was ashamed of. And it made me feel like a, like a different person. But then when it all boiled down, Brad, the whole thing, after it's taken so many years of, of, of trying to see what's happening, I was offered a million dollars for my company. And I respectfully declined that because I feel that my, I want to help more people than that. We need more, we need more in the pot for that. And it ends up, that because I felt so good, I went to bed calm, knowing everything is all right. And that night I had a dream and I was presented the situation that has busted me up my whole life. When I was four years old, my parents split up. My dad had me live with his sister, my aunt. And living with my aunt was kind of rough. She lived in a sex and eight neighborhood, you know, and ends Dude, up. Just, just interrupt you for a moment, even though people are going to kill me for this. Because they, they don't like me interrupting, period. But especially, they're going to be pissed that I just interrupted this. But I need to tell you, like, if I start to get emotional and I start to tear up, my natural, like, protection is to, is to laugh. I don't know why I, I do it. But if I ever laugh when you're, like, freaking telling something serious, dude, that's because I don't want to cry. You understand? So don't think I'm sitting here laughing because I'm not. Like, this is freaking. Dude, number one, you should be on stages all over the freaking country saying this because again you're just telling a story right now dude you know how fucking popular you'd be as a public speaker huh thank you brad yes i'm well i didn't know well, not that only before. that but especially like dude like i charge twenty five thousand bucks and people pay me left and right you're way better speaker fucking i am first of all second of all the money that you would get i i bet you a portion of it would go to the vet deal you know what I'm saying? Yes. So like, dude, you're going to be, this is going to freaking do wonders for you. I can't believe you're not already like freaking 
public speaker all over the planet. I'm not the first person you're telling this shit to. Am no, I? No, but you know, Brad, it, it, it takes time. I guess it takes time for the, you know, for everything to season right and get, you know, get done properly. But now that I'm allowed, you know, and, and, and able to uh, share this and, and kind of know where it's from, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to share. You know, it's been, you know, to get this out, it's, it's been through some, some crazy stuff, man. Okay, so now that we got that disclaimer out of the way, I want you to go back to where, okay, you're sitting at the fire. You just said, freaking, you see this scar. He said, holy shit. And then you said what? Well, I told him, told him that, that I killed myself because I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't know, I didn't know what was next because I was stuck into a single way of thinking. And no matter what, Brad, if somebody looked at me wrong, even if I do, I got 17 breathing techniques, you know, ah, all this sniper breathing, all this stuff to get me in the right mindset. If, if, if I get like that all the time, something else is wrong. So taking all these layers away took me back to when I was four years old and I was able to see this without being emotional in it. And what that was, was when I was living with my aunt, I ended up lighting some, some leaves on fire that was, that was next to, you know, next to a little place where we're living in. And, you know, the leaves, it's, it's in a little Section 8 neighborhood. Uh, the fire truck comes out. They put out the fire. And uh, everybody's like, you know, who, who, who lit the fire? And, you know, I'm the one who lit the fire. So everybody said, you got to give them a spanking. So they're in front of everybody uh, out, out of our apartment complex called Cherry Arms in Alexandria, Virginia. I was given a spanking with a switch, you know, down south, you know, you know what a switch is, right? Yeah, stick, a yep. branch. Yep, a little branch. So my aunt, you know, she, she gave me a spanking like she was supposed to. It wasn't anything crazy, but me being in public and being people watching me, you know, uh, uh, get a spanking like that, it made me feel uh, ashamed. It made me feel, you know, uh, not confident. It made me feel like nobody likes me. It makes me feel like I, I didn't want to live anymore. And that same feeling would follow me around, you know, my whole life, everywhere I moved. Only thing that changed it was when I was six years old, I was in a judo tournament because I asked my dad to put me in martial arts. My father shows up at this first judo tournament I'm ever in. I'm so excited that my father shows up. I fling everybody with the same move. I had to fight three people and I took them down with a headlock takedown. And on that day, they put a gold medal around my neck and when I raised my arms, I got the feeling that I never felt before that was goosebumps. And that would drive my whole life. You know, shit. <laughs> yes. Keep going, dude. You're, you're, you go back to, I mean, I like the goosebumps, but you said this, this thing flew off you at the campfire. Yes. Like, what was it? What do you think it was? Like a, like a demon lifted out of you or, or, or like a, a big relief? feeling you know it it i think the relief feeling was the demon off me the fact that i felt like i that i had to hold it in you know my my whole thing is i wanted everyone to like me the only reason i fought i wanted people to clap for me at the end i want to take people's souls from them but at the end of the day i wanted people to love me so when i was with isaac when he showed me that <laughs> you know i felt something man you know <laughs> see so, what i mean like if i wasn't laughing dude i'd be freaking tearing up like see mm -hmm. dude i can identify there a lot of people are listening to this they're probably tearing up because they're in their car by themselves mm -hmm. because everybody wants to freaking be liked everybody wants to feel like that you ain't alone there either dude but people but most people won't say it you know what i'm saying keep going dude keep going yeah that was the toughest Shit, thing this podcast to do, is gonna Brad. make you famous you're gonna get thousands of followers i'll mm -hmm. bet you anything Why? Because, dude, number one, you're a four-time world champ. Number two, like, dude, you're just a cool dude. Number three, like, freaking, you're talking real shit, man. Vulnerability and everything. Even though you're four-time kickboxing champion, you, why, what, what, what taught you to be vulnerable? Well, that night when you said something and then thought, damn, I'm going to start just saying everything? And really, Brad, yeah, you know, my, my, my father dropped me off when I was four years old. He had, he had to go, he was a special forces. So he had to leave for a while. I'm with my aunt for almost a year. And you know, when he came back, I didn't, I didn't want to tell him anything. I was like, man, dad, let's get the fuck up out of here, man. You know, he had a Corvette and I'll never forget. 
It picked me up in a Corvette and we drove from Alexandria, Virginia, all the way across the country to Oklahoma, to Fort Sill. And in that car ride, I love road trips. Brad, if you said, Tim, you want to go driving for three hours? I'm like, hell yeah. You only got to tell me where we're going. If I get to ride in a car, there's a comfort of riding in a car that I never understood until I remember back. Oh man, me and my dad was in the Corvette. We went across the country and I said right then, I ain't never got to tell nobody nothing, man. And I hit it so deep that I thought that was my power. My power is, man, look, I can take anything and I can just say bye. I can just leave people. I don't have to say nothing to nobody. I can leave and my heart don't even beat because I brush it under the rug. So I was a professional brush it under the rug guy. And, you know, it came out so much when I didn't want it to. Somebody says hi to me or somebody doesn't say hi to me and I flip out. That's not right. So I figured something had to be going on, man. But who am I going to tell this to, man? You know, you got somebody nobody. sitting down. Hey, fuck, I, I ain't telling nobody nothing, man. You know? So you're just, you're just trapped with it in your own thoughts. I was trapped with it. And I brushed so much under the rug, man. It was, there was some lumps in there that I didn't know about. So being vulnerable with Isaac, first I had to see a warrior that was telling me about you know, the atrocious stuff that he had to do to get up out of that country and bring all his 150 soldiers back home. And man, when I heard him say that and he wasn't boasting, he said, Tim, man, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed that I had to do these things to these families, but something happened physically. I can't even, there wasn't a picture, Brad, but something happened off Isaac's body that, that, that was almost visual. Like there was an energy that he had been walking around with for so long because he didn't have nobody he could tell either. We're not going to tell some psychiatrist, some dude, you know, some dude that ain't never been to battle. Somebody ain't never been shot. Somebody ain't never been stabbed. Somebody ain't never been scared for their life, locked in the bathroom with a baboon. You know what I mean? What am I going to tell him? But him, Isaac, I respected him. I saw him as a warrior. And I said, man, this is, you know, this shit was from me. Because fuck else I'm going to do, man. If I don't fight, what else, what else is there in life for me? That's all I knew. What was his response? Holy shit. You know, he said, Tim, he got up and he, he hugged me and he said, man. He said, Tim, I'm so glad you told me. I don't judge you. And I love you. <laughs> See? Dude, this is freaking awesome. Isaac loved me, and he don't judge me. And I'm sure he's going to hear this. Isaac, I love you, man. What is that, the camera right there? Yep. Isaac. Well, not only that, but like you might have saved his life. Because something lifted off him, too. He's coming back to life too, Brad. My warriors Amen. is coming back to life, man. And so that's what made you start helping the vets and, and raising money for, and forming the nonprofit? Well, I was already helping him at the gym. Actually, uh, Randy Couture had started the chapter here at his gym here in Las Vegas at Extreme Couture MMA. And I had been coaching, but crazy to say it but I was coaching these guys you know because they were in the gym and it was it was warriors and I figured I'd come in and you know that that's my good part if I do my good part you know maybe one day I'll be blessed and have a good feeling let me help these guys out because just one more day in the gym let me let me help the more good things I do maybe I'll get lifted up and it wasn't the good things man it was it, it was the connection it was the vulnerability and it was the it was, it was Isaac man had he not asked me to go camping three for you know, to keep on go camping nah but he asked me again, and that connection, um, that was a game changer. So I went from being a coach at, at you know, a coach for MVP to, you know, uh, a, a, a true member. And I'm, I, am, I am the reason this organization was started, is to take combat veterans and professional athletes who don't have no group of people they can talk to. And hopefully inside that group, there'll be somebody or maybe multiple people that you can get in front of and say, hey, man, you know what? This stuff happened back in the day, and I ain't been able to share this with nobody. But I'm going to share it with you because I know you done been through some stuff. You got shot in your neck. You almost didn't make it out, and you understand where I'm coming from. And that's what happened, man. Connection. Vulnerability. 
Big. Dude, now, since that, since that time, how long ago was that? Almost four years. Since that time, what are you doing right now? Well, since that time, what I ended up doing since I felt so good about that, I was like, man, if, you know, if I can feel a little bit uh, uh, better from sharing that, uh, what, what else can I do to feel better? You know, if I'm driving my car and somebody cuts me off, I still have to do 13 breathing techniques to not want to take that person out. So let me figure out what else I can do. Is there something in my brain? So I let out the suicide thing. I let out the beating people up thing. I let out some of these frustrations. Something's missing. So I found out that there's brain rehab for guys who have been blown up and guys like my friend Jerome who just left who have had a lot of football uh, contact and a lot of shaking of the brain. There's brain rehab that can be done called neurofeedback and something else called transcranial mag st uh, magnetic stimulation, which is basically shocking the brain into the pattern it's supposed to be. And the best way to think of it, Brad, is um, if something were to go down, we want our brains to think 411, you know, give me the information. You know, if, if something life-threatening goes down, we want our brain to think 911, let's, you know, boom, we got to do this, you know, ah. What happened with my brain is whenever something goes down, it goes to 911, period. Sometimes, depending on how big it is, I don't remember it happening. When I'm a child and I moved to a new neighborhood, I was in Fort Leavenworth for 10 weeks. There was three people that caught a good stiff ass whooping, and I don't even know why. One of them said carrot top, one of them hit me with a book, and one of them was just in the bathroom at the wrong time when, you know, something went down. So I don't remember those things because my brain would go to 911. Why do you, why do you think that is, though? Well, it's, it's, because of, it's because of trauma, Brad. I know, you but know? like what? Getting your ass beat in public? Well, it's, 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 it's tricky here because the way the brain works, there's certain patterns. It's an electrical, you know, electrical system. If something gets shook around too much, some of the electrons or, or, or some, of the, some of the movement will go on one side as opposed to the other. So Neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity. Let's see, if there's head trauma, Brad, something can happen. Children, before they develop, before age six, their brains are learning. It can get locked into certain behaviors. So if people have physical or emotional trauma, the brain can be locked in. Unfortunately for myself, when I'm trying to dig all these things out, I asked my parents, I said, guys, you know, you know, was there any trauma? You know, bef was, was there physical trauma? Was something happening any time before, you know, six years old? I found out from my mother that I fell out of my high chair when I was two and I had a skull fracture. This is in Germany. And I didn't know this before because I'm mean, two years old. How would I know that? But then listening to Isaac and listening to some of these things that's happened with these other combat veterans come to find out. There was some stuff that happened when we were little that, that, that we didn't have any control over, and that's yep. not our fault. Oh, one time I fell off a slide. I was hanging off the, the, the steps this way, going like this, and for some reason I just let go. And when I let go, I just watched the ground all the way up until it cracked me in the forehead. And I have a, you can see a scar right here. I think I was under six. And I remember my Uncle Donnie uh, was there, who you remind me of, by the way. My Uncle Donnie was there, ripped his uh, sleeve off his coat to put around my head because it was gushing blood, and took me to the hospital. Now, I, re I don't remember it. I remember it, if that makes sense. Mm. I mean, seeing the ground, I can tell you it was freaking like light tan wood chips on a playground with underlying cement. And when I watched it, I went all the way down and bam, don't even know how it's cut. Big mm. old cut right there. Maybe that freaking stuck my brain into some shit and it because it, i don't do i don't do what you do i don't i don't go i don't see red but dude uh, you know I, i'm i'm i call that like an extreme so mm -hmm. i always i just read a book called hypomanic like you know oh you're bipolar bro one day you're happy one day you're not no not really i'm always happy but like for example if somebody uh embarrasses me like, if I feel embarrassed, I get fucking instantly pissed off. No matter what. Why? I don't like being embarrassed. Number one, if my little girls fall down and hurt themselves, I get in fucking raged. I start fucking 
yelling, red faced, screaming at anyone that's around, not anyone, but like, for example, my wife was sitting there. I said, Hey, you guys stop running and da 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 da. They didn't stop running. Boom. All of a sudden, I hear screaming. I look up, one of them's hurt. Dude, I can't help it. I just instantly get enraged. And I'm like, See, honey, you're not watching the girls. And it's, it wasn't her fault at all, but I just couldn't help myself. Why do you think that is? Maybe that's what happened. Mm. I'm stuck somehow. How are you, when, when you're realizing this, how are you doing it? You, you're just self-discovering? Did you, did you hire somebody? Did, you, did a vet help you through it? Like what, what, what technique would this be called? Well, this is called digging. This is called digging. digging. Yep, yep. Digging but, is definitely self-discovery too. But, you know, um, Brad, a- after, uh, after my fight career, I went uh, b- prior to MVP. I, I went to a class here uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, it's an emotional intelligence class, and it's called Choice Center. And this, mm. was, this was something I was like, wait, emotional intelligence? Maybe that'll, yeah, maybe that'll help me. Well, that, that helped me kind of unlayer thing, and it was, it was discovery, what is the breakthrough? Discovering, discovering what it is, and then how do I break through that? So with the trauma that happened with you, have you remembered that before? Have you talked about that before? I've never really talked about it before, but I do remember it. One time I was swimming across the Willamette River, almost drowned. Mm. How old were you? Under 10. Mm. I don't remember. My brother, my brother saved me, and, mm. and he almost drowned because of me, but somehow this pallet was floating by. Mm. I mean, imagine that, dude. A, uh, a if I'm 10, he must be 16. Two brothers swimming across a river, stupidly thinking, why not? I left my clothes on. We're halfway across. And freaking, and I'm, and I'm on a swim team, dude. I can swim. Mm. I'm, go, I'm going under. I mm. can't, I'm not making it. And all of a sudden I feel him grab me by the back of the coat and pull me up and slam me on this freaking pallet that was floating by. Mm. And he was going under trying to freaking, I mean, I'm telling you, we would have drowned if that pallet wouldn't have came by. So is that trauma? Wow. That is trauma. Yeah. That's ne- trauma, never, never really talked about that either. Of course, I don't really remember these things. Maybe it's because that's a protection mode. It is a protection but mode. But I don't see it as trauma. I just think is it, I just see it as, woo, that's a close one. You do now, Brad, but you know what? You got, you got, you got the two essential biological factors or features that's needed from anybody that wants to win or succeed at a high level which is the eye of the tiger and the heart of a lion that's a liger (laughs) you 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 have that brad and you 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 would succeed in anything that you do and the fact that you you're bringing that up about the past you know i i didn't remember about the leaves being burned until this past december that's when I was offered a million dollars for my company. I didn't, I had had dreams about being whipped with a stick and being whipped before, but I'm like, man, nobody ever whipped me. My family, you know, I get a spanking, but a regular spanking, you know, a switch is a, is a, is a, is a form of, you know, it's a pretty rough form of, of, you know, of, of spankings, but it took a while for that to, you know, for that to come out. But traumas, man, if, if, you know, that you falling on your head like that, that's a trauma. And if you look before what was happening same day, right around that time, was there a lot of, was there a lot of uh, uh, anger or frustration going on around that, you know, when that so. happened? We were at a park. I mean, I don't know. I remember one time stealing from a store at like two or three years old. Store owner caught, it was a little like general store almost. I just grabbed something, put it under my shirt, walked out. He goes, what are you doing? Give me that. Boom, gave it to him, said, sit down there, wait for your parents. My mom came, my mom had to come get me. I was sitting on a sack of potatoes, up against a sack of potatoes, out on the, the, the porch of this store, waiting for my mom. My mom showed up with a freaking hairbrush and freaking spanked me all the way home with a hairbrush. Mm. And I even remember going by one of those grates in the street, right? But like, why do I remember that? I still remember that grate in the street. And I was like two or three years old. I was maybe four. I, I don't know. I, I don't even know who to ask. Mm. But I remember it. Is that trauma? 
It is. Maybe that's why I don't like to brush my hair. Matter of fact, I don't brush my hair. <laughs> mm. Man, I don't it comb it be. and I don't brush it. Haven't since I was about 16. Used to, though, back when it was freaking feathered back and shit. You have great hair, dude. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's just all fingers. <laughs> my wife, just, uh, just, just since, uh, since quarantine, uh, my wife would always cut my hair, but it's been, you know, it was receding, and then, then it got a little patch here that was bald, so I was kind of doing this, but the wind blew it up during quarantine, and my wife goes, oh, you look like a little chicken hawk. <laughs> I was like, wait, chicken hawk? I was like, nah, I got the clippers that day and I decided to go bald because it was a bald spot in the middle. Then I got this and then I got one little thing. Now I'm a chicken hawk. I was like, nah, I'm gone. <laughs> bald head right now. Dude, now what, if, now what if someone today says some stupid shit to you? You, 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 you still might knock a motherfucker out or no? No. Ever? Would, no. I, 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 I haven't been aroused like that. In, what, if, in, what, if, what if they did something real wrong? Like, dude, you better step in. If like if, some like some dude clearly is abusing his girlfriend. It depends on the situation, man. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, and it depends on where I'm at. You know, what what well, what time sure, it is. like you don't want to kill so, yourself over it. But at the end of the day, it's like there's certain things where if I'm walking by and someone's hurting another human being, I don't care what the reason is. I have to say stop. At least I would try to stop this individual. I mm -hmm. might end up dead. I realize that, but I can't not help somebody. But I'm also not a world champion kickbox fighter, boxer, kickboxer. Mm -hmm. So that must just feel cool walking around knowing full well that, you know, most people that you're looking at, one crack, they're down anyway. <laughs> it's almost like that cool feeling you'd get if you were sitting there with your girl and someone messed with her and, and you, still ain't, you still ain't doing nothing and then they're up in your face like a bully and you just say, hey, look, bro, you're about two seconds from the most embarrassing moment of your life. And then they're like, oh, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, that is what mm. I said. So that's got to give you confidence. Yes, it does. And it, it, it allows me to feel comfortable in my own skin. But it's, you know, it's a it's a completely different way. that I see the world now, man. And, you know, br you know, bringing up bullies, uh, a friend of mine, uh, his, his last name was Kane. So it was Kane and Lane. His name is Jay. So it's Jay Kane and Tim Lane. We used to go around. And especially in school or wherever we go, if we see a bully that's doing something bad to somebody, we would take care of the bully. Uh, he and I both uh, had, to, had to be, um, uh, we both went away for uh, uh, fighting and things like this. But I went on to pursue my professional fight career. And now my friend uh, has, has kept his anti-bullying skills and he's a celebrity bodyguard. For the past four years, he's been really close um, and, and protecting on the artist, the weekend, you know the weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and see, that's another thing, folks. Like, like Tim Lane, dude. He knows almost everybody, don't you? You've been around. Like, you, 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 you hang out with all the top athletes. You freaking train at Couture. You know all the fighters. You know all the celebs, or not all of them, but you know what I mean. I've been blessed to be able to meet quite a few people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, but but I didn't talk about the career much because we just got into that freaking heavy stuff. But dude. The listeners need to know, like, dude, you're, you're, you, you know some people. So this guy protects the weekend. He's, he, he never went to be a fighter, but he's still a badass. Yep, he's, he's definitely still a badass, and he, he's, he's been able to channel uh, himself and channel his, you know, Jay and I had, we, we haven't gotten to spoke about it as much as I want to in the future, but we had a lot of things happen to us when we were little uh, that, we, that we never really resolved. And now that I have these tools and these, these insights that I've used, uh, I plan on seeing Jay very soon, um, and, 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 and we're going to be able to go through this stuff together. But the fact that we both stayed in our, uh, with our passion has been, has been a beautiful thing. And it's, you know, for him, for him to be where he is now, uh, I'm, just, I'm just so proud of him. And, 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 and to be able to channel himself and, and stay positive, his, he's a big guy. So it was little Tim Lane and big Jay Kane. So this guy is, um, you know, six, two, maybe two fifty now. And he's, he stays in shape. Uh, his, his, yeah, I'm just proud of him. He's been, he's been doing a really, a really good job keeping his life together. Dude, what was this charity you, you said, a nonprofit, what's it called? Merging vets and players. Where, MVP. where, where do, where do people go help them at? Vetsandplayers.org. 
vets urging and vets players. and players. Yeah. So that means it's, it's either vets or like professional athletes. It's made for combat veterans and current or former professional athletes. We've had quite so a bit of So that's why NFL. merging vets and players. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and they basically help with what, head trauma and, and all kinds of things? The biggest thing is, Brad, we, have, we get together once a week physically where we have an hour workout and then a one-hour fireside chat kind of like you know, what, Isaac, what Isaac and I did, um, so we can get to know each other, so people can know that they're in a group and that they're not alone. So we develop a phone sheet so people have nobody to talk to. Then when they come in there, they find people they relate with, and then they can talk to them and share and, 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 and do things like what happened with me and Isaac. So really, it's a, it's a, it's a platform for us to meet because we, less than one, per, I mean, how many combat veterans really are, are, you know, are out there? You know, there's, 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 not as many as we would, you know, we'd like to have to connect to. So MVP pretty much connects, you know, is a connection device. And then the other resources as far as brain rehab and things can be learned through the group. And how do you raise money for it? Well, they have uh, donations that they accept. I, I, I don't know exactly on the business side, Brad. You know, I tell people about it, but they, they have a team uh, to, to, raise, to raise funds. But it's mainly word of mouth. And, it's, and, and people listening, if they want to donate to that, they go where? Vetsandplayers.org. Vetsandplayers.org. I don't know if I say hi to the bomb squad. Hey, bomb squad. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do, just because that's such a killer sounding group, so I'm going to freaking call and make a little 5K donation. It ain't, yeah. it, ain't, it, 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 ain't, it ain't much, but it'll keep them, keep them going a little bit. Yeah, MVP, hopefully the, you hear that, baby? Five. Hopefully the bomb squad will go to vetsandplayers.org and, and freaking donate, and all of a sudden you guys will see a spike when this episode drops. I know you're going to get a lot of followers. <clears throat> My question is also, you've trained a lot of people to be badasses. These guys had no boxing experience you turn them into golden gloves champions this guy you turn into a 20 and 0 professional fighter like what what's your gift when it comes to coaching man i think you know the, the gift brad is 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 connection and focus and confidence has nothing to do with technique not as much not as much as you would think it's it's, it's the technique is a technique man you can go to england you can go to russia you can go to australia you can go anywhere and learn a jab a straight a hook and a hook and an uppercut and an uppercut but it's how you apply them. It's the music in between the notes that counts. The stuff that people don't see. Mm. So you've seen these like celebrity fights going around like Jake Paul and Ben Askren. Well now, like some in the CEO space, I see now old Grant Cardone and Manny Fernandez are about to tee off. I don't know if it's fake. I, I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure it's a stunt. I'm pretty sure it's a it's a attempt to to mirror and mimic the attention grabbing money making scheme Jake Paul and Triller is on mm. if i were to get pulled into that arena i would call on tim lane to train old brad lee because i'd just decline obviously cuz I, you know, I don't need to prove anything but it's funny as hell can you imagine if someone says hey let's do one of those celebrity boxing matches and and i and i have to be involved well, as long as you got, you know, a little bit of time, shit, go train. Now, if I trained with you and somebody else did not train at all, would you bet on me? Brad, I don't care, you know, who, who if, if, if we're dealing with someone who does not have fight experience, like yourself, you don't have fights, there would be no comparison at all. Because what we would do, not only is... How long is would you need? Six weeks. All right, so if anyone ever says, hey... I'll challenge you. I'm going to say, good, give me six weeks. I'll meet you in the ring. I think it'd just be fun sometime. Don't you? I mean, was it fun when you got in the ring? It was. And I, I, I really enjoyed it. If you can get past the fear of getting your ass kicked or getting knocked out or basically getting hit, dude, every MMA fighter I know, like Zach, you know Zach here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. Every MMA fighter I know, Chandler, all of them, dude, they're having a good time in there. Mm. The, the people without fight experience is, are, are, are the ones going, holy shit, mm. that guy must have freaking huge balls to get in there. Well, dude, once you do it every day, all day, 
spar, 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 spar. It's probably not as nerve wracking in there, is it? Mm -mm. But you just, you just, you just, you just said two different things, though, Brad. You said, you know, MMA people and you, and Mikey Chandler. There's a big difference in in, in it's it's like putting you in a in a in a in a circle with a bunch of CEOs or business owners. You're a different dude. You're a different breed. You can tell by the look in your eye, and I already know what you got in your heart. Mikey Chandler, I remember when he first came to Vegas and he walked in Extreme Couture MMA, and I know the eye. When he came in, I said, man, that kid right there, that's a champion. Mikey's on a different level. Some people do it for this, and some people do it for that, and some people do it for, hey, I do it for artwork. I wasn't about that. Mikey's not about that. You're not in here just to do business a little bit. You're in here for a different thing. There's a, there's, a, there's a higher level of devotion and dedication to what you do and how you feel about being number one and getting a job done. So Mikey Chandler is, is, is in, a, in a class of his own. And you had him here, right? I, I had him on Zoom. Oh, well, dude, he's... He'll, he, as soon as he gets the belt, he said, me and him are going to hang for a couple of days, chill out. We're going to go camping. <laughs> oh, no. That's great. That's great. Well, we have we have a, a place up at um up at Mount Charleston. It's called the Healthy Brain Resort, and that's where we send our combat veterans and where I went myself to get the neurofeedback train or neurofeedback done. And then they also have you know uh, uh, different different rooms to stay in. It's a it's a resort, hot tub in the back. They got a one eight uh, a one eyed dog. They got chickens. They got roosters, and it's mm. uh it's all in nature, man. So that'd be something really good for Mikey. I'll get in touch with him and let him know about the neurofeedback because it's, it's, it's just now getting into the fight industry. People know about it, but it's more so with combat veterans, and, um, but we're we going to get the word out. Dude, what about um, Tim Lane? How, what, like, you're, you're, you're stick boxing, which is cool. It's exercise. I saw you doing it. You have an interactive training system. You teach it at facilities. Like, it's getting popular as hell. Tell us about that. Well, the sticks, actually, I brought these on. What ended up happening, Brad, when I, when I, when I retired, I, I, I became a coach and I had, you know, had some champions come up and I developed these sticks so I could train my fighters so they could be, they started off with a swimming noodle, which is many coaches, you know, use today as a, as a training device. And what ended up happening is this guy comes up to me in a wheelchair one day at the gym and he says, Hey, I want to learn how to box. And I'm like, man, I've done this before you know, with people in a wheelchair, it hurts my back to lean over and they never get satisfaction from being in a chair and stuff. <clears throat> so I said, you know what, instead of me holding this for somebody to hit, you know, standing up there boxing, I said, here, grab these. So while he was in his wheelchair, man, he was able to reach me and use the stick as an extension of his arm, the same way that punches go. So what I realized is, man, people who are dealing with disabilities, they can actually still feel good. All they got to do is move a little bit and pop. So moving and popping and being able to connect. With this dude in the wheelchair, we did it for a couple minutes and he stopped. He got emotional. I said, hey, man, you know, what's up? I just met the dude. He looked up at me, Brad. You know what he said to me? What? He said, I haven't felt this good since my leg was blown off in Afghanistan. When he told me that, brother, my whole body lit up. I got goosebumps all over me. I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God, I know my next mission. I thought I was supposed to be the world's greatest coach and teach people how to fight. And Man, body sticks is me. But nah, it's not about that. It's about helping people that don't feel like they have anything to do and help lift them up. So with this organization now, we have these sticks in all six of our chapters. We also have it in a group that I work with called Rock Steady Boxing, where they have Parkinson's. So what ends up happening, Brad, there's over 10,000 locations of Rock Steady Boxing that they, they do boxing to reduce their Parkinson's symptoms. What ends up happening is when they activate their hands, it takes their brain off of, off of what's happening. So people with Parkinson's, you know anybody with Parkinson's? But they shake a lot. Jay, you know Parkinson's? Shake a lot. All right. Well, yeah, I know lady, what it is. So this lady one time, her name is Dorothy, right? Dorothy shares and she goes, we're supposed to share a daily routine of something that helps you in life. Um, when you're dealing with Parkinson's, how can it help you? 
And Dorothy says, you know, when I'm eating sometimes, I'm shaking so bad that I, I can't get the food to my mouth. It's falling off. So what do I do? And she stopped talking. No? What would you do? What would you do? If she, if she asked me that? Yeah. She asked. She couldn't eat with a spoon because yeah, she was shaking. I, I'd say hire a person to feed you. Okay. Well, somebody else goes, this guy named Mark, he's big mouth. He goes, you eat it with your hand. And I'm like, yeah, eat it with your hand. You know, we're being open. She goes, no. All I have to do is get a set of chopsticks. And if I hold my hand still for about a minute, my shaking stops. I can eat with chopsticks. Dude, blew my mind. I'm like, oh my God. So all we got to do is, it's a mint. It's a, I mean, look, you're not going to stop all the symptoms, but if you can reduce it for a few hours at a time by activating the hands and the motor skills, is that possible? And Dorothy let me know it was possible. And once again, I was like, oh, my God. So the sticks became not only a connection device for the combat veterans, but now, dude, I'll show you some videos later. We got, a, you figure, 30 or 40 people that's in a circle, and they all got sticks. And they're all going to the beat of the music and they're all able to move with each other and they're able to hit, they're able to connect with their partner without getting hurt, Brad. What happens when you have Parkinson's, you know, they're self-conscious, man. They don't want to be around people. They're never comfortable. So they have a group that they can go together. And I found that what this is, stick boxing, it's, it's not about fighting. It's about connection. And man, <laughs> blew my mind. So the sticks now, they're going to be in rock steady boxings all over the world. They're going to be in MVPs all over the world. And those are nonprofit organizations. But Where it's can gonna, people buy those? TimLaneFitness.com. All these are on my website. And yeah, stick boxing, the art of connection. Did you, when they, if they buy them online, is there a box for a code? Is there a box for a code? Yeah, like can they put in Bomb Squad? Uh, no, but I can make that happen. I, I just, can make that happen. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll make a code for them. Yeah. Well, I don't, want them, I don't want them to get a discount, and I don't think they want a discount. You know what I think they want? I, what I want? I want to be able to call you after this drops over a week or two because, you know, that's the main downloads. It, the people will listen to this a year from now, dude. But, but the main, when I drop it, gets a little attention. I just want to know how many people went and donated how many people went and supported tim lane just by buying the damn sticks even if they freaking play with their kids how many people are listening to this that want to join those groups how many people you know listening to this identify with everything you just said they're sitting in their vehicle crying where do they reach out where do they like go to the vets and players but what if they're not professional vets but this is still resonating they're just they're just freaking they've just had trauma and they can, if, if, if they're here in Las Vegas, they can come to Extreme Couture MMA. But, you know, as far as uh, different, other different groups, um, I deal with. Should they DM you? Yes, they can. Yep, at Tim Lane Fitness. Yeah, so, so folks, if that just described you, just go DM this dude and freaking figure out what you can do. I hope this is being recorded or I'm going to kill people. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, my timer's not working. So it's like, uh oh. If this wasn't recorded, I'm going to freaking die. I know it's recorded on video no matter what. Mm. But this isn't recorded, dude. Holy shit. Eee. Dude, this is awesome stuff, man. I, I'll bet you anything you're going to, this, this is going to be one of my best episodes. Everyone's going to want to freaking help and support you. There's going to be a lot of people that want to join you. There's going to be a lot of people that want to uh, volunteer for the vets and players, emerging vets and players. Um, I want everybody to go get these freaking sticks. I, I want you to train me as a Golden Glove champion if for any reason I ever get pulled into these, you know, boxing fiascos. I, I, the, the only reason I think so is because I know Grant and, you know, he wouldn't ever call me out, but I'm much bigger than him. You're too, I was going to say you're way too big. Oh yeah. Him. Yeah. But Manny yeah. and him, like I, I saw Grant shadow boxing. It didn't look like he had much power behind those punches. And then I saw Manny hitting the gloves and dude, it looks like he had a little power. 
Manny, M Manny obviously knows how to hit. I mean, he, he, so he, he just, looks like he's hit something before. Just, I'm, I'm assuming it's a stunt of some kind. Like, you know, Grant's not stupid. He's a master at getting attention. You know, I think uh, personally it's a, it's a attention-grabbing stunt by the both of them. Mm. I think Manny's getting the best end of the deal because way more people know Grant Cardone. So they, they'll go to see Grant in a fight, which is crazy to think. Mm. And then they'll be exposed to Manny more so than Grant will be exposed to Manny's people. Dude, so so I think Manny's the true winner. I don't think it's real, but if it is, and you saw both of those posts I showed you, if it is, as a professional, who you think's taking this deal? Well, from what I just saw, Brad, you know, it looks like Grant Cardone needs to master his, uh, his, his, his body into getting into those punches. What it seemed like to me is, uh, what's the other dude's name? Manny Fernandez. Manny Fernandez has hit something before in the way he was hitting them pads. You know, e either you've hit something before or you haven't hit something before. And if, if, you know, when, whether it's fake or not, it could be all cool. Me and Jay could be up in there, but you put, you know, you put a thousand people or you put it on pay-per-view and you know what? Oh, I forgot that I had more fights than Jay, or I thought I was a professional or I forgot I was, you know, a professional because I don't want to look bad, you know, and myself, that would be a hard thing. I, I wouldn't put myself under that situation, but I was asked a long time ago, crazy thing. I'm down in North Carolina and I'm, I'm at, uh, an amateur fight for one of the guys I was working with. And they said, Tim, there's this guy who's on the movie set training uh, Bruce Willis in, uh, uh, remember the day of the Jekyll? There was, there, there was a movie he was filming. He was in North Carolina and he had this kickboxing guy with him that was training him that traveled with him for the movie and making his, you know, making his thing. Professional kickboxer from England. And the dude had like 40 pro fights. He said, hey, we're in the same weight class as one of your other guys, which was me. And this is a Joe Lewis karate team down in, in North Carolina. They said, hey, would you want to do an exhibition? And a guy says, hey, mate, you know, talk to me in an accent. Hey, I just want to move around and do this and this and being very nice to me. And I was like, hey, he looks the same weight, sized him up. I was like, yeah, dude, let's go. I'm down with that. So I go to do an exhibition with this man, right? Who's going to be playing around? And I'm cool. I'm in shape. And I'm, I'm, I'm out there. I'm. We're going to trade shots and do this and that. Well, I go out there and I kick him with my, my favorite kick, which is my rear leg round kick, to the body. This man, as soon as I hit him in his arm, and if you can imagine here, Brad, I kicked him in his arm. He took his lead leg and he chambered it up and he kicked me under my nose with a side kick, right? My, I never had this broken, this, this, little, this little pop under here. But my nose starts leaking like, you know, like a, like a faucet. I'm like, man, are you kidding me, man? First round, first, you know, first 30 seconds of the fight. This is supposed to be an exhibition. And I'm like, okay, it's, you know, it's time to go. And I, I don't remember vaguely uh, 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 the fight too much, but my nose bled so much over there, they stopped it for a moment to wipe things off. But it went to the third round. And in the third round, I couldn't breathe. You know, there's blood all over the ring. I finally caught him with that kick in his liver and I put him down again and they stopped the fight a little bit early, even though it was an exhibition, bloodiest fight of my, of my career. So you put people in the mix, man. And that, that whole exhibition stuff is, 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 is a lot of times out the window. Oh, it ain't an exhibition. Yeah. Well, no, if, 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 if you saying that it, the reason be I say up, exhibition is because dude, neither of them are professional fighters. They're two semi known people. But Hernandez has, has had a competitive fight before, right? Well, I, I was looking at his profile to be like, who is this dude? And, and see, that's why I think Manny's going to win because more people are going to figure out who he is than Grant. I think Grant's doing it just to get more attention because Grant likes attention and he's great at getting it. Mm. And he sees Jake Paul and what he's doing and he's like, why can't I do that? So, so Manny, saw, I saw this card that said he was a coach in, in US, uh, U.S. Boxing Association. Mm. He was a coach. And then I saw him hit the bags, and I'm like, damn, he, he's got a little power behind those punches. Mm. Um, and then I saw Grant shadow boxing, and, you know, he look, it, it looks like he needs a whole bunch of work. Like, in other words, if I had to bet right now, based on what I saw, I would bet if that's a real boxing match, they're going to go out and both of them are really going to try to knock the other dude out, like a real boxing match, not exhibition. Like, they're totally seriously doing it. Mm. I think there's might be a gimmick to it where it doesn't happen. It's all for publicity or when it, you know, when it does happen, it is exhibition. They've agreed already 
to just, you know, throw some pussy punches and not really mm. do anything. Or if it's real, then at this moment, now maybe Grant's being tricky and he's showing that stupidity when in reality he's been training for three months. I hope that video wasn't real. I hope he was just playing around in that video. What if he wasn't? He'd he reconsider. Yeah, bail out? Catch a cold or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I got the flu, man. I got or, the flu. or step in the ring and freaking get knocked out. Dude, what does it feel like to get knocked out? I don't know. I ain't never been knocked out. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Have you ever asked somebody that you knocked out? Uh, no, but I've had it come up. You know, it, it's come up. I, I wonder I, what it feels like. It's just lights out. I mean, I've been, I've, I, I've, I've been hit on the street. I got hit with a, uh, with a bat, um, knocked me out. I jumped out of a car, land on the street on my chin, broke my jaw. That knocked me out. But uh, on the end of a fist, I've had a, my nose has been shattered in a, uh, in a, in a fight, but I've never been hit and, and knocked out, been knocked down, but I always seen the lights and I always been able to get back up and do what I got to do. Well, I haven't been in a million fights, so I've never been knocked out, but that ain't, that ain't making claims. I'm some badass. That's just a fact. Dude, you're a thoroughbred. Come on, man. You're well, a thoroughbred. You can say it however you want, dude. You got the, you got the, you got the look and the heart. It's in the well, grow, the heart. well, growing up, bro, there wasn't a bunch of MMA at all. Mm -mm. So like if you rarely ran into someone that knew any more about fighting than you did, it's the, the toughest dudes in town were the ones that fought most. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody, everybody that fought was pretty tough. Mm. And if, you know, but there was no, you know, MMA and there was no, I didn't know any boxers. I didn't know any professional fighters in my school. Everybody just fought after school. It lasted 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Whoever got popped a couple times quit and that mm -hmm. was the end of it. Mm. And so me, I kind of avoided fights. I don't really uh, want fights. I feel like butterflies when, I, when I'm about to fight. So I'll do my best to avoid a fight until I can't avoid a fight. And then I freaking turn it on. Mm -hmm. And I hit three ways. Fast, hard, consecutively. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's all I do, and 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 there, and you better hope there's a ref around because I I I I'm a bad judge at when you're out. Mm. I'm gonna go <laughs> as fast as I can, as hard as I can, and and and, and hope I don't get cracked. Mm. And every time I've been been pushed to actually fight, that's what's happened, and I and I've never been knocked out. Like I don't know what it feels like, and I've never I don't think I've knocked anybody else out either. I've seen people get knocked out. Mm. Have you knocked people out? Oh yeah, I put people to sleep, man. Right on the spot. But, but like, is the, is the chin the best place to jack? Ear. The ear? Ear by far, you know. <clears throat> to knock them out. Because personally, like, let's say you, you, you can't kick the person's ass, but you get one off first. Yeah. And you knock them out. Gives you time to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of crazy to say it like this, but you like this, Jay. Hitting someone in the ear. When you do it enough times, especially now, we haven't really gotten to this, but I was incarcerated for four years as a teenager, Brad, and certain times they call it bathroom, right? So bathroom, whoever has any problems with each other, if there's a handful of people, we meet in the bathroom, we tie our shoe and we go at it right on the spot, right? Ends up when you hit someone in the ear, it's connected to the equilibrium, right? So I got, I got caught up with this one guy. Happened to be one of the biggest guys in our crew, but they were trying to give me as the fresh meat. I'm, I'm, I'm living in a new cottage. I'm one of the first guys in there. And they're going to say they're going to take my lunch unless, unless I go in there and fight this one guy. I said, you know, okay, you know, do we have to do shoes? And they're like, yeah, you got to do shoes. So you imagine, so we're going to tie our shoes, right? Tie the laces together. And now we got to go at it. There has to be headshots available for me. Sometimes we only go to the body, but I said, because of the size difference, I need a headshot. I caught this dude in his ear, very first shot. They, 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 they say, ready, set, go. I hit him first shot. Boom, catch him in his ear. I thought he was playing. He, he leaned back like he was almost going to fall, and then he came back towards me, and he actually fell on me. I push him back, and I go to swing on him, and he actually fell to the ground, but he was trying to get up, and his, his, you know, his shoe was tied to mine. But, and he was trying to talk. And everybody around there, everybody was, including myself, I was like, oh my God, my heart's still beating and everything. But I hit him one time in his ear. That's the biggest guy that I fought at that place I was at. And that right there stuck with me forever. 
So I, I say anytime, any place, anywhere, the ear, because he thought he was still there. It's not like sometimes, you know, the chin or the nose, blood goes everywhere. This was clean, man. Hit him in the ear. None of the staff knew that there was any trouble, and I never got in trouble for it. So the ear, <laughs> whack out. And he, loopy, that's it, dude. So, so the ear is the, is, the, is the home run. Damn. That's good news because everybody wants to punch someone in the nose or the mouth or the cheek. Oh, bro. Open hand smacks somebody with a leather glove on one of the ears. Blackout. And the whole thing goes crazy. So if I'm sitting there in a situation where it's like, dude, I, I'm pretty sure that this is going to end up in a fight. And, and by the way, that's when I'll strike first. Mm -hmm. No matter what's going on. Like, if I'm in a situation where, dude, my gut's telling me we're about to throw down whether I want to or not. You have to strike first, yes or no. Have to. So that's what it is. Again, that's me. I'm a common sense dude. Mm -hmm. I'll avoid it until I can't, and mm -hmm. then I'm. But smacking that ear is my best shot at getting out of that quickest. Dude, if you did it like because I was, the dummy? I, I, I've always tried to aim for the chin, mm -hmm. or I just start throwing, and I don't care where it hits. Mm -hmm. If I just practice like this yes. ear shot, and someone was like in a bar, and we were a little bit close, and and and, and I hit them, what's the likelihood? that they go down every time every single time and here here's here here's the difference Brad. You sure i don't want to pop nah, well, someone in the ear and well, then Brad, have them just get pissed off and beat my ass that would never happen that would that that you're not gonna have to hit nobody in the ear man because as we get to know each other more you we we're gonna start dealing with each other more and we're gonna get this ear shot down because the day i met you brad the reason that i watched your show and the reason that i really wanted to learn more about you is because you, the day you treated me so good we bumped into each other by the elevator he said, what's those sticks, man? Well, that day, you also showed me Bob, you know, the guy in the pool room, the, the dummy, Bob. And you're like, Tim, what do you think about this punch? The way you already did the hook punch, you showed me your body. You showed me how you, how you do that. You already hit, man. So if you hit somebody in the ear like that, most likely you're going to hurt them bad. And I know it seems weird, but what's happening around the ear, not only is it connected to the eardrums and your, and your equilibrium, but it, it could, you could kill from behind the ear. So it's with your power and, and, and the way you, your heart and your eye at a tiger and, and everything into it, man, it wouldn't even be fair if you hit somebody, especially with no glove on. When you hit right, Brad, and when you train specifically and proper and really dial in and hone in on what you're doing, you know, it's, it's, it's not as fun and it's not as, as, as cool when somebody is asleep and, and, and happens to pee on themselves after you knocked them out on the ground from hitting them in the ear. You know, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, but that's good because that like applies to anybody, even if they're a professional. If you get that ear first, mm. everyone goes down. Because mm. like, dude, you, you can hit some people in the mouth and it's like, holy shit, they got an iron jaw and you now you're in a scrap. Iron. And you probably broke your hand. Hands hurt. Now all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, I shouldn't have took that swing. Mm. But, but, but the ear shot. Even yeah. that dude goes down, bro. Is it better than the nuts? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it definitely is. I mean, if, if you have a clear shot to the groin, great, but an open hand smack to the ear, you know, it, it, you could, you could hurt the hand a little bit, but, uh, either one to the ear, man. Game well, this is, one would feel less pain. Man, you think that, but it blows. I thought that too, but remember I tested all this stuff out many times, man. That so, right there. So this is, is, would, would hurt less? Uh, this, this is less pain or less, less, less injury. You know, this, our hand could get injured, open hand smacking, and, 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 and it, wouldn't, it wouldn't break, it may not break their skull, right? Hitting them here, if you miss, you could, you could hurt the hand, but doing this, it could break the eardrum and, and, and just put them out. So the open hand smack, you may not kill them, or they may not go to the hospital, but they're definitely going to get an eardrum shock and, and, and be hurt. You know, this one, especially for you, man, as, as big, as strong as you are, and as you hit that thing over there, if you hit somebody, Brad, really, with, with no glove on, you, 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 you could break their skull and, you know, and kill them, especially if you hit them around the ear. So, <laughs> Well, thank God yeah, I don't dude. get in fights. <laughs> See, this is my point also. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to get in fights. Like, I don't want to like hurt anybody at the end of the day though it, i always watch movies where you know there's some loudmouth dickhead at a bar that puts you in a situation where you have to fight 
And I always thought to myself, nowadays, with everybody knowing MMA, like you never know who is about to make mm. you fight. And then as soon as you start fighting, they turn out to be freaking Tim Lane or something, and you get your ass whooped. Mm. So I was thinking, maybe, maybe I just go learn Krav Maga. My buddy says, dude, I mean, now I'm like, and by the way, here's what's funny. I was talking to a couple of MMA guys, and I said, if there was only one thing I could learn, one thing I could learn to freaking like have the best chance in a street situation. They said boxing. I would agree. Or track and field. Track and field, I think, is number one, but boxing. Track Box, and field is running. You've run. <laughs> get on. That's no, no, what about what about hurt. what about if you're younger? Because again, I don't care who calls me a pussy for running. I'm sitting there smiling with all my teeth and not mm. freaking a broken hand. I'll be like, yep, I'm a <laughs> pussy. But when I was young, calling me a pussy would have, oh, I can't run. My friends are watching. Mm -hmm. What if someone's listening young that they're like, no way, dude, I can't run. I'd be looking like a puss. What would you say to them? Man, you have to stand up for yourself, but you know, name, name calling is name calling. If somebody gets close enough where you can smell their breath, I believe you have the right to defend yourself. And I teach my children, guys, if, if somebody comes up on you, you have to take a step back, put your hands up. Guys, look, I don't want any trouble. If they continue to come at you, you have to do what you have to do to survive. If somebody swings, game is on. And, and, and something I say too, Brad, is um, a lot of people say jujitsu is, is, is one of the best you know, uh, forms. You only could do one you know, martial art. Problem is with a street fight, you know, I like judo, so I do throws. That's, that's about throwing, learning how to throw and fall. So it's, a, it's a, a grappling type of sport. Issue is where my father moved in, uh, in, in uh, Fort Leavenworth after we left uh, um, Oklahoma, I ended up defending myself against someone who was, you know, trying to bully me and I flipped him like I always do. And, you know, when I flip them, they land on their back on the ground and I have their head in my hand. So the dude's wind was knocked out and he goes, oh, ah! and his face is right here. He ends up closing his mouth and biting my armpit so hard that I let him go and I screamed like a pig and I went home. I said, dad, you know that I don't want to do judo no more. You know, I want to do something different. So I, so I don't, there's no contact like that. So I started Taekwondo, which is a, a Korean kicking martial art, but it's hard to use the feet and the feet can break, you know, and, and sometimes if you're in a bathroom stall, you, you can't really kick nobody if somebody's trying to jump you. So boxing or elbows like Krav Maga is, is something that I would, that I would definitely recommend. But when it comes to striking, Brad, you ain't got to worry about going nowhere and training with nobody else. Um, because we're connected now, brother, and I, I got all that. Tim, bring the pain lane. Yeah. Dude, listen, we, we don't have enough time to keep talking, so I'm going to make sure I invite you back for another one of these. When can you come back here? And you let me know, Brad. I live, you know, I live about 10 minutes away. So anytime? Anytime, baby. Tell me. Now, your Instagram is at Tim Lane Fitness. If anybody wants to check him out, follow him, give him some freaking kudos. Tim Lane Fitness, if you guys are down, if you guys own a facility, kind of gym facility, where group exercise is a part of what you do, this freaking stick boxing is growing huge, I think. It's, it's popular as hell. Again, when you guys are filming in the studio, and by the way, he's got a full-blown training system. Is that for gyms to, to, to put it into their group exercise uh, line up or is that for like people at home that just want to buy the sticks it's mainly for at home brad but people can do it for their you know for their group sessions but what why I'm doing, wouldn't they what's that why wouldn't they oh, man, it, it, like remember uh those exercise class i forget what they're called jamba or jimba or zumba zumba yeah i know zumba yeah but like zumba got big where like everybody liked to go do zumba yeah and, and dude why couldn't it be the same for that because i was oh, using yeah. those dude that's addicting that makes you want to go out there and do it learn those routines and all of a sudden it's like it's almost like therapeutic listening to the melodic sounds of the bumps. And mm -hmm. like you say, connect people, the snaps, you know, if you get like almost choreographed down, you could freaking, you could put shows on with that thing. Mm. That's the plan, brother. Right now, what I'm doing, Brad, with, uh, with the sticks, I've been working those great with merging vets and players and the rock steady boxing. But what I'm trying to do is teach on a, on a, on a much bigger level. So I've developed a workshop that that's on focus and follow through. I want to teach my focus and follow through skills that I learned throughout my whole life of 30 years of fighting. And then 
passed on to the fighters. I just didn't know how to explain it. I've now broken this down on, as an elite athlete, there was some things that I had to do to ch really channel in and get my goal and to get, to get clearer and sharper on my image. And like the lens on a, uh, on a camera, how I'm just, just kind of honing in on it and dialing in to, to try to get to that level. And now I'm doing this for free. For the first time ever, I'm doing an all-day workshop to practice on and learn focus and follow through. Where's that at? That's going to be live on Zoom, and it's going to be on Sunday, May 16th. Anyone can do it? Man, anybody can do it. May 16th. That means, Jenna, we need to drop this ASAP. I'd drop it the next opening. We just push somebody out. Drop this. And folks, share this out. Somebody needs to hear this. Everybody needs to hear this. If you're on YouTube, share this out, folks. Everybody needs to hear this. Do what you can. Go to vetsandplayers.org. Support that group. Support my man, Tim Lane, by going to Tim Lane Fitness, picking up the sticks for your kids, for yourself, and freaking make sure you go follow him on social media. And then, and then, by the way, this is just part one. Part two coming up. Part two coming up. Tell next. What's that, your book? Bro. You See, sipping tea with the devil, how to face your demons in the fight of your life. Dude, see, now I got to have you back. Folks, just FYI, sipping tea with the devil. Is that on pre-order yet? You come back and we're going to talk about this on part two. Fair enough? Till next time, kids, keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.